Drop it, drip it, drop it. Floor Rider right here with uh, going down for real between such the Gemini. Along with the inspiration and humor, there is also wisdom about life and how to enjoy the phase of life known as retired. Brian Sabiti Mackenzie's rise to fame on radio started at Hot 100. Mackenzie, my name. After noticing that he needed more, Mackenzie quit Hot 100 for Radio City, which was a new radio station at that time. The station has since risen through the ranks and is now among Uganda's top English radios. In his early years as a radio guy, Brian just wanted to be the best. His desire to be at the top was immense that he won an award every year for eight years straight. Different accolades, but still, this wasn't enough. He knew he had to do better, so Mackenzie tried out being a continental presenter which got him at number six in Africa. He went on to be a judge at the Channel O Awards and was a correspondent for Jamming Africa, one of Africa's biggest radio countdown. His life in radio opened doors for him, but not his heart. He still felt a need for more. Brian Mackenzie worked for Hot 100, Spirit FM, Kampala FM, and Radio City. Now, if you don't embrace change, then you fall in love with irrelevance. My guest today used to be a, a personality, a radio personality, adored by the world. The time he announced that he's going to retire, he shocked the world. I myself, I was one of the people that were shocked. I was like, come on, because this guy is my role model, come on. I mean, his voice used to penetrate on each and every radio whenever he would sit behind that mic. He was inspired to join a radio as much as he's inspired many. With no further ado, please allow me to introduce to you a businessman, events manager, and a CEO of his own PR management group, Keller. Man. What's up, man? Welcome to the show. That was such a crazy intro. Ah, <laughs> I wanted I, to I do the best I out probably, of it. I probably, I, I don't think people introduce me like that. That's too good for me. Like, <laughs> you know the craziest thing is amazing. that yeah. you still have a lot. I guess. I, 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 didn't, mean, I didn't even mention about rapping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That. There's, there's, uh, that's why when someone introduces you, you get like, it's a mind-blowing situation. You start realizing that, oh my God, I've actually done these things. Mm. Yeah, but thanks for having me, man. Radio, yeah. TV, media in general is such an interesting space to be true, in. True, why true. decide to quit? I wouldn't call it quitting. I would, I would call it maybe um, finding your footing. Because uh, if, if, if you realize almost in Uganda, Mm. To be a great media personality, you need to have a platform. Mm. And this platform, in most cases, has been designed by other people who have their own visions, mm. who have their own dreams and realities of what they want to subject or project to the world. Mm. And you reach a point in your career and you have your own projection, you have your own ideologies, you have your own mission, mm. you have your own, I would say, vision of what you want something to look like. And sometimes it's very hard to do that when you're stuck in another person's vision. How long did you take biting on this decision? About five years. Come on! <laughs> really? I mean, I started doing events uh, f about five to six years ago. Yeah. So when I started doing events, it opened my mind to the kind of, I would say, uh, what, what you call power mm. over your, your, your fan base. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, what you would call power over your fan base. Yeah. Or uh, when you have some sort of an arranged way of, communicating to your fan base that is away from what you have been used to from TV or radio, you kind of get excited. So you start thinking big. You start thinking of what I would love to get out there. So I would definitely think events is what opened that ideology for me to say, I can actually do more because I grew up knowing that the only thing I could pull off was radio yeah. and then TV. And then I get everything that anyone working on TV and radio would want to get. Yeah. So you reach a point and you feel, what more can I do? You know, if uh, Drago is coming up, needs to come up and find me in a position where I can help him as well. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, project what he has as a vision. Yeah. So it's just a blessing to be in that 13 year long career and get here and think maybe I need to push for 13 more, mm. but this time in my way. Radio to Mr. Mackenzie was like a parent, a therapist, and most importantly, a comfort zone because these two were inseparable. You know, after being nominated for numerous awards and even ranked as number six radio personality, of, I mean, how could somebody even let that go for a moment? But hey, we're here to hear it all, all right? Now, I want to find out, Mom. Yeah. How long did you take? Okay, I asked you that before. That. Yeah. But what are some of the things you put in consideration 
uh, quitting for um, a while, radio? To be honest with you, I think it's because I'm also a father. So because I'm a father, Ooh, that, and that's I the have, biggest job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, it has a huge role to play uh, with that because my son was not around for about two years in, in the country. So in his return, uh, there was a lot of decisions I had to make in the sense of me projecting to him who really I am. I think there's just a bit more than radio being because mm. it's, 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 it sometimes becomes an identity. Mm. Like uh, on my social media, I am the radio guy. Mm. So easily someone is like, how can you call yourself the radio guy and you're not on radio? But it's something that is inside me. If I do it 20 years from now, I'll still be the radio guy. If I did it before, I just thought it's, it's better to have a chance to dictate my own way of doing things in my career. I and, mean, um, because you be serious, like who can forget that voice? I that mean, charisma, there's, there's, that uh, excitement. you know, you, I, I'm sure you know, like Kazora, you've seen the Alex Ndaulas and everyone. Uh, these are great personalities that we've watched the D Dr. Mitch, um, uh, Crystal Newman, uh, Shanice. Uh, these are great personalities that are now living their lives differently off air. I was not that kind of person. I wanted to be on air till I'm 80 or 70 years old. 75. Yeah. So because I want to go till 80 or 75, I need to be able to be ready. I need to organize myself together to get back into the game in the right way. So I did take a break. I don't think it was more of retirement. I took a break from it because maybe what I was doing at the time was not as believable to me as it should have been. Um, if anyone was maybe uh, a listener of mine when I was working on Hot 100, yeah. it was very natural for me because I was young, working on a young station. So obviously you'll get everyone excited because... Would well, that sound yeah. so crazy when I say that yeah. you're, one of, you're in that swimming in the deep end with some of those illustrious I mean, uh, career people like you talk about Dr. Mitch. I mean these, about, these are people that I look up to so I wouldn't want to imagine myself in I their mean, same I bracket. According to some of us. Well, exactly listen, yeah. so it's to everyone's perception because I think Kazora does not think is as great as Mitch. You get what I mean? I mean you replaced Kazora. But years, exactly <laughs> but I feel I feel I mean it's just you, there's a way you look at Kazora and you and you and you and you exalt him to a particular level, but then he also looks at Mitch and exalts Mitch. Then Mitch looks at Alex Ndaula and exalts Alex Ndaula. So I think it's about where in, in, in your position, in your career, or in your state of life you are, to look at people like that. Personally, I never put myself in that bracket. So I would you concur <laughs> that some of those are your role models? Yes, I, I, would, I would call them inspirations. Role models, I would say maybe Roger Mugisha uh, from the young age. And then I got to him and he told me, you need to be better than me. So that was like really dope. For someone who you've looked up to the entire time, you are a baby thinking about radio. And then he tells you, um, okay, now, so this is the time for you to be better than me. That's different. That's role modeling. That's someone who is creating your career mm. in a different way. Um, the others has been really inspirational. Fat Boy is still on radio. He's my inspiration. Um, anyone really that is on radio that is being good sometimes I I'm get going inspired. to ask you the very first time it felt like yeah. being behind a microphone but before that <laughs> le le let me ask you something this yeah. is I even quote yeah what exactly did you mean yeah. when you say that I am um, my life in radio yeah yeah my life in radio opened doors for me but not my heart I still felt a need for more what is that what did you exactly mean by that I grew up with uh, a single mom so in many ways I always wanted to be accepted or wanted to, I mean, people should pay attention to me. I, I wanted to be famous. So I wanted to stand out of the crowd that I was raised in. This whole maze that I grew up in of not knowing who you are because my father passed away before I was born. So I, I don't know, I didn't have anyone to relate to. So radio opened that for me because I got to meet so many other guys who are like me. Not necessarily brothers or sisters, but I met people who believed in the same stuff that I believed in. I met, I was doing hip hop music, so it just opened my, my brains up. Like I met a guy called GNL Zamba, and together we built some crazy empire uh, that blew up. To, to, to me, you a rapper then? You are a rapper then? Yeah, I was doing rap and he jumped onto a song of mine. I managed to work with so many other different rappers. Today, like the likes of Big Trill and so many of these guys. Uh, this was the time when I felt needed. It's the time when I felt like there was someone paying attention to me. Rude Boy Killer, is yeah. that 
Your Root Boy Music, actually. Root, Root Boy Music. Yes. yes. That's a record label. So that was like the, uh, it was a music project, I'll call it. And yeah. then it turned into RBM, which is like uh, it was turning into a label. So all these things were a foundation for my career. But then I realized that I was doing much of it with an energy of trying to get attention, trying to be noticed. And then I reached a point and I was noticed and it wasn't enough. So I felt, okay, so if radio is not enough, what could be enough, you know? So I looked into my mental health and different other things on how to get myself together. That's why I say radio created a, a, a platform for me, but it did not fulfill me. Like it gave me a platform to find something that fulfills me. Okay. That's the position I'm in right now, I think. So let us go back memory lane. Yeah. The very first time you on radio. Yeah. How did it feel being behind that mic? Just <sighs> describe for me the feeling. Having thousands of people tuning in. I the very first thousand, time. No, yeah. on the first one. <laughs> I don't think there were a thousand on the Hundreds? first one. Oh, maybe let's say maybe like 10, 50s, tens, like something Are you like that. Me? It was a radio station called Spirit FM, and hmm. uh, I was in senior five. Is that a, like a Christian radio? Yes, it was a Christian radio, and there was a gentleman. Is it still in existence? Yes, but I don't think it's in the same place. It's now, I don't know, I have not been But it's the, still on the frequency. Yes, yeah. uh, it's still on the frequency. Um, so at the time when I joined it, uh, or when I was trying it out, I was in my senior five. And there was this teacher that was, she believed in me a lot. So she told me, we need to go and try out this. So I tried it out once. And I had myself through, like the headphones. I spoke and I had myself through the headphones. And it was just, I can't really explain how I felt, but I've never felt noticed in my own way. And I felt there and then that, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. Like there and then. It was just easy. I mean, I grew up with a, a small radio next to my bed as a child. Yeah. So you listen to Karita Solanya and uh, Alex Ndaula. You listen to Fat Boy and Shanice. You listen to all these different acts and everything. And then one day, boom, it's right in your ears. And it was, it was like, yeah, this is what I, I also want to read do. it was that much easy convincing your parent to be on radio. Um, <laughs> it, was, yeah. it was sort of rebellious. But we're yeah. going to tackle that next. That was do you like to eat food? Yeah, I mean, I'm seeing this and I'm... That's chicken breast, stuffed chicken breast with vegetable. Uh, that's cabbage with some uh, parsley. Uh, this is potato wedges. Yeah. Take a bite, please. I like this. Um, as a matter of fact, I, uh, I've been looking at it and wondering when am I going you to... You know me, instead of getting chips, I would go for potato wedges. Yeah. Because they still have their peels on mm -hmm. and uh, the, the look, the golden look, and yeah. I'm sure the taste is, is, is great. And they're more satisfying. Mm. The chips can be more snacky. More snacky. <laughs> than uh, properly eating. <laughs> All right now. I'm more inquisitive about I'm this. I know you're going chicken. to hate me, guys, but we're going to take a cliffhanger. I'm going to go in for a short commercial break. As because Mackenzie is still here with me, I like this busy enjoying his meal, and uh, we'll return shortly. Don't go anywhere, please, and don't touch that remote control. In Brian's early years as a radio guy, he always wanted to be the best at each and everything, so he pushed boundaries each and every time, wanting to be the best. He just confessed that because um, that's the kind of idea that came from his role models that he made. Oh, some of the people that he looked up to. But I would like to find out before I ask you, because you happen to do tourism. Yeah. How did a person like that end up on, uh, in, in media or practice in journalism? When I think about it today, I think I should have continued to tourism. No way! Um, in, in this way, today tourism is making a lot of money. So, really? You know, yeah, really? yeah, there's a lot of money in it. Um, <laughs> no, but I, 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 I don't think I did as well at campus, uh, sorry, in S6 for me to get MassCom at Makere. So they gave me MassCom at UCU and um, I, was also in, I was also admitted at Nkozi, Nkozi, Nkozi but Makere University gave me tourism. And my uncle is a very Wait, nice... Wait, so that means you studied how many times? No, like they, when, when I, I literally oh, applied, applied, so yeah. they all give you all these. So, so I why got, did you shout out this other I got, university? So that's why I'm excited. <laughs> literally, that's it. So my uncle, who is my guardian, because my mother died when I was in senior four. So my guardian who took over, who is uh, the brother of my mom, oh, is a very 
serious gentleman when it comes to education and also just to help my career, you know, set set. I think forth. it's the thing with all African parents. I guess, I guess, but he was doing it from a good heart. I want to think, <laughs> I want to think so. So he told me, if you go to UCU, Mukono, you're wasting your time because it doesn't have the credibility of Makere University, just like in Kozi. So you need to try out Makere and there was tourism. And um, I'm lucky to be at Makere because growing up, you go to nursery, primary, secondary, Makere. So I'm like, okay, I've made it in life. But then after two years, I got my job at Hot 100. Hmm. And I just felt I was wasting a lot of my time. And uh, so I got a dead year and this and that happened. So I had to go and take on different other courses in my, um, on, on, on the side, literally, that I paid for, that I felt were important to me, yeah. that I have managed to now bring out into my career with different uh, ways of marketing, events, IT, and all these different things. So tourism was just something that I was forced to do, and it just didn't work for me. And just like that, mm. did not continue. Mm. But yeah, we got to carried away. I yeah. got to carried away when I met you at the door. Yeah. I even forgot to introduce the show. Oh yeah, <laughs> people, you're watching Chilling on UBC <laughs> TV. <laughs> I'm Drago, and please yeah. go on our social media outlets. That's Facebook, uh, Twitter, and YouTube. Subscribe. We need more subscribers. It's it's more like a, a, a it's a, a build. It's it's more like a, an expanding empire. Nice. We're having more and more subscribers each and every nice. time, which nice. is an overwhelming thing. Yeah. So. The, the charisma, the desire, the wanting to be all the best all the time, where did it come from, that drive? Um, I, sometimes I wonder, I, I really wonder. You know, they say that the biggest or the greatest athletes in the world have some of the poorest personal lives or private lives. So I think sometimes when someone wants to achieve greatness, it's because they have a void that they want to feel. Um, if you look at Michael Jordan, if you look at Le LeBron James, if you look at Muhammad Ali, if you look at uh, Ty Mike Tyson and any great athlete that you know, if you look at Tiger Woods recently, uh, everyone has some adversity or something that they want to um, you know, fill up or some void that they want to just cover up. So I think for me, it was mostly because I didn't have a father. I didn't grow up with a father. So I always wanted to be the man, man, man yeah. in my way and stand out. And, um, it just drove me crazy till today. I cannot do something if I don't think it's going to be the best of it. So it's, uh, it's something that I've taken advantage, on, uh, we, uh, advantage of uh, later on in my career. But earlier on, I think it was just simple intuition that you have to be the best. Is there a better satisfaction you've ever gotten in your life than being a father? Than being a father? No. <laughs> you see, I was tricking you right there. Than being a father? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, you became a father at a very tender age. Yeah, I was 22. My whole life changed when I became a father. So how? It's, I, it's, uh, it's very, very hard to explain how I sometimes had to suck. Hanging out was a big deal to me because it was my way of finding playmates or friends. And so changing that lifestyle and not going to the bar as much and start making money out what of it. What about your relationship? How has it affected your relationship status? Um, yeah, my, my relationship status. Because, I, you know, I'm, girls, I'm nowadays, not, I, if, I don't if, if, think, if you come with an extra package, they're like, hey, hey, yeah, 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 hey. yeah. I've not been as consistent as I should have. <laughs> I, I don't think. But I can say that I have learned from that inconsistency. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I'm in a very good position today. Yeah. I'm proud to say that I think my son is enjoying anything that I'm doing. How does it feel like, I mean, he's almost grown now? He's, he's making 10 this year. Uh, yeah. How does it feel to feel like you're actually not even raising a child, uh, your own child, but uh, almost like a brother? <laughs> yeah, you know, recently he was singing um, God's Plan. And he had this line of, she said, do you love me at all? I only partly, I only love my bed, I'm a mama, I'm sorry. And I was like, you love your mama and your bed, that's it? Like, you don't have love for me? He's like, no, 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 no. You're the one who taught me this song, so that's why I like it like this. And uh, it's, it, we've become, it's like my little broke housemate now. Wow. He's, uh, he's a cool friend of mine, and... Um, is teaching me a lot. You know, children have a lot to, to teach parents than us to teach them sometimes. We actually follow them uh, to guide them in the best way possible. So no regret there. I'm learning a lot. No regret there? Not at all. All right, absolutely. Yeah. I love it. I Probably love, need I... like two more and then I'll be good. That's good. That's good. Ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> are you, by the way, speaking still in the same field, are you, are you single or are you? No, I'm not. I'm not single. Uh, Proudly not single. 
just look at those cameras and the um, hundreds of cameras. But you know, I, I always say this. Yeah. Um, men who say I'm not single uh, and they're not married, sometimes it's a trick. It's a trick. Uh, because I know I've said this before in an interview that I was single and then now I'm saying I'm not. So um, wait for the wedding. If it does happen, then you can know it's official. But no, I'm not, I'm not saying I'm saying someone, oh, someone yeah. really smart, someone yeah. who's helping me understand life better. Yeah. Um, I think it's good to be in a relationship if you have a good stand. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of happiness and joy inside me that I want to share. Mm -hmm. And I found someone that has a lot of joy and happiness in them. So we are, we're meeting in the middle. It's just a, it's a song of ice and fire. Wow. It's <laughs> the best way to describe it. Yeah. I mean, I like it when two people meet and they, yeah. they understand each other. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's really something that uh, anybody would want to look up to. Yeah. I think people should experience it. Yeah. yeah. So um, here you are. Yeah. Uh, Radio for now is on a break, yeah, or television, yeah, or whatever, yeah. And now you own your own PR company, company yeah. And uh, something very fascinating still, mm. radio has a role to play in that radio, True. especially Radio City, yeah. You developed this idea still, yeah. on radio, yeah. How did it come about? Um, I was working with a lady called Didan and uh, Andrew Kabura. She is your friend, uh, yeah, a very good friend of mine, yeah. and um. We, 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 we used to just sit and think, what can we do before, beyond uh, radio? Mm. And at the time, I was doing really bad. I was literally getting back on my feet. I had been sick for about a year. Um, I had high blood pressure. I put on a lot of weight, and I needed to cut that. I needed to do so many things to, re, re, to, to get some redemption. And so the first thing I ever did was a birthday party of mine. So I called my friends and ended up getting about 800 people <laughs> at a birthday party. And when I got 800 people at a birthday party, my friends were like, you need to start monetizing this. You need to start making money out of these people who want to support you. And so my events company began like that. Now, since I began radio, I always called myself Keller. So it became so easy to just call it Keller PR because it had to represent my beliefs, my system of, of social media. And at the time, were the first social media marketing company in the country, uh, so it was very special, and were specifically working in the entertainment world. So we worked with people like Keko, people like Navio at the beginning, and we have since moved into having party franchises like the Kellogram Sal and Disco, uh, Mix and Grill. We have so many great ventures that we have put up there yeah. uh, using Keller PR because it's just a good vibe. So in the past three years, our main focus has actually been uh, working with DJs and building DJs. So when you work with DJs and you unite them together, they become so big. You can you can tell right now, DJs are a huge deal. Um, a DJ gets 500,000 as a basic fee for two hours. Mm. So that's a great experience. That's a great addition yeah. that I think Keller PR has done. And this is, I think, why I started it. This is, I think, why it came to my mind. To be able to give the country what I felt it needed mm. beyond what was already on the, on the floor. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's quite interesting. Yeah. So we're going to play a little game. Yeah. This is Marry, Kill or Date. Oof. Yeah, 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 yeah. Jesus. Yeah, 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 yeah Jesus. Marry, Don't call kill Jesus or now. Date. Marry, Kill or Date. Okay. Irene Nintali. Marry, Kill or Date. <laughs> Be I'm as honest had a as crush you on can. Irene Nintali. Is she watching? <laughs> Definitely you're not killing her. Um, no, I am not. Uh, Irene Nintali <laughs> refused me about a couple of years ago. <laughs> what? Uh, I don't know why she has always dilly dialed around me. Uh, but Joe Vera, Jim Vera. Same Vera. At some point, I, at some point, I felt, you know, me and Irene were, were I think. Um, yeah. But yeah, she's she's a big superstar now. She's at Coachella. Marriage, date. Um, date. Ah, okay. Definitely. <laughs> okay, Lupita Nyango. Marry, kill, or date? Mm. <laughs> You know, you just have to come up with just one. I think I would definitely, I would definitely marry Lopita. Why? Yeah. Because of her success? No. I think she would give me an edge that I don't have in my life. Okay. Yeah. Uh, when you know AJ? <laughs> uh, Proteins. For you? <laughs> <laughs> For you, no, I'm saying the mirror. No time look alike. I have my own proteins. I like winning. Watch, why would I say kill? Um, so you're definitely not killing anyone. Um, <laughs> You know, I've had winning wedge. She broke up with some guy who was wearing dreadlocks. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so maybe kill. Because I don't think I'm her type. Oh, you yeah. just didn't crucify I, her by that. I, I don't think I'm her type. <laughs> yeah, but she's, she's a cool chick. I really think she's one of the most hardworking ladies. Okay, second last one. Yeah. 
whom can I think off the head? Now this is going to be a tricky one. Mm -hmm. Deden. Deden? Yeah. Your workmate. Your former workmate. If I marry, marry Deden, she would kill me. Date. If I dated Deden, people would kill me. So let me kill her and we just take our life. Like, so very wise. <laughs> if I marry Deden, she would kill me. If yeah. I dated her, they would kill me. So let's just say I would kill her and uh, I would kill myself after Juliana that. Juliana Kanyomozi. <laughs> Juliana is marriage material, man. Like, uh, she's someone that, um, she's a princess, you know? Yeah. She's a queen. Mackenzie. Yeah. Thank you, bro. Anytime, man. We've had an incredible show. How yeah. can people get in touch with your PR business? Or um, how can they reach you? I have a number for everyone yeah. that anyone can reach me on. And this is 773 uh, uh, 849 I'll say that one more time. It's 773 849 553. I do social media marketing. We also do bar and uh, our, um, outdoor events. Yeah. We market, we create, we sell, we promote. There's a product that I'm coming up with real, real soon. Yeah. It's uh, a product called Pride of the Pal, and it's uh, a, a venture for us to reach out to as many different initiatives around the country and give them a platform and give them an office for them to be able to sell their ideas. Mm. So you can reach, in, reach me out and just uh, talk to me. There's just, uh, there's an infinity of ideas that I have. Mm. So I'm really glad uh, that I'm here on Chilling. Please yeah. uh, make sure you subscribe. Yeah. Uh, at hit the social the, media handles. Hit, hit the bell. social media handles. They at, the radio guy, at the radio guy 256. Mm. As simple mm. as that. At radio guy, radio Instagram, guy Snapchat. Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter. Yeah. My Facebook profile, which is very easy, is Sabiti Brian McKenzie Sabiti. because that is the center of everything. Yeah. yeah, please promise to us that you'll come back on radio. I'll definitely television. come back. I because want this is not the end. I don't want to promise you that I have a radio station that I know I'll go no, to. No, 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 definitely but you made that clear. I can promise you yeah. that there will be a radio station under me. All right. What an incredible guest. Yeah. What a talented, multi-talented. You Thank know, you. me, I call you multi-talented. Thank you. There is nothing in the world that it's you can It's a blessing. Do. It's a blessing. I take it in. He's a father. He's a rapper. He's got some vibes. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> he's a radio guy. And he also is so magnificent on TV. Now, until next time, with another great personality, please stay tuned every Tuesday at 7.30. And also catch the repeat every Sunday at 8.30. This has been uh, chilling at the BMK house, and I uh, would love to thank Quasi Classic for this uh, incredible uh, matching outlook. Made me look like as if I'm on a beach or something. I was just about to call Malaika, we go for a date. <laughs> okay. Don't, don't, don't record that. <laughs> but thank you, Lawrence. Thank you, Esther. Thank you, Elijah, each and everybody. Until next time, bye.